Now this is our 10 frame hidden compartment beehive tool cabinet. I designed this to be left down in the bee yard and have a place down here to store my tools so that when I'm working my bees and I need something I've got it at hand and I don't have to run back and forth between my shop and the bee yard to get all the things that I may or may not have forgotten while I'm working the bees. Now we've already seen this tool cabinet. We've seen the outside, we've seen the inside, we see what it looks like and I thought it would be a good idea to go up to the shop and show you how it was built. Now, I'm probably going to release three videos. We'll have this video, which is going to, going to be an abridged version. This is going to show you basically how it was built. This is for the person who wants to see how it was done but doesn't necessarily want to build one. And then in my playlist, I'll try to put a two-part series, 30 minutes each or thereabouts, that show you more detailed uh, how I built it. And it has a lot more conversation and just hanging out with, uh, with me while I build it. Um, but there's a lot of uh, information in there that you won't get in this abridged version. So, with all that said, let's uh, run up to the shop and get started on this project. I'll show you how, uh, how we put this thing together. Don't necessarily do what I do. Do everything the way that it should be done. Sometimes I'm not the safest person in the world, but make sure you follow shop safety guidelines and rules. Um, you shouldn't be wearing dangly clothes, as one of my buddies, the, uh, the Schickster, said. Uh, when you're on the saw. However, um, like I said, follow safety guidelines. Be safe. Be careful. Don't cut your fingers off. Avoid the blade. It bites uh, regardless of what power tool that you are using because power tools do not care if they bite you and you're crying. They will keep on biting and you will keep on crying. Follow the rules. The goal is to connect all of these boxes together. I could go either four high or five high. I think four is going to be enough. I don't want it to be a towering hive, especially uh, in the winter time. So I think four is going to be enough, but I need to decide a couple of things. How am I going to join these boxes together, number one? And two, should I cut the front off to make the door before I join the boxes together? Or should I join the boxes together and then rip the door off on the table saw? And I think that is what I'm going to do. I think I'm going, to, just to make sure that this thing is structurally sound, I think I'm going to glue the boxes together first and then, and then rip it down on the table saw. biscuits sliced into the uh, that box. Now, let's slice them into this box. Now, just make sure they fit together right. Throw a couple of biscuits in here. There's two. Sometimes you hit a staple. What are you going to do? All right. Now, we have a couple more questions we have to answer. You have to forgive me. I'm not playing this out. I'm just winging it. I can see it in my head. I know what it is I want. I think I'll figure out how to get there, but I don't. I don't have a plan on paper. So now, do we need to fasten this to this? And I think the answer is yes, but I don't think that we are going to fasten it. With biscuits. I think what we're going to do is we're going to use screws. All right. Let's go to the drill press. I think these are the screws I want to use. It's 
find a bit. I think this is the bit that I want to use. So now we can fasten this to here. pilot hole in there just because make the fake uh, entrance reducer. Okay, what I want is 14 and 3 quarter. This is just a piece of scrap wood left over from cutting the tops off the uh, boxes. This will make a perfect faux entrance reducer. Right. These pieces are married together. All right. Now it's time to take the measurement for the bottom board. Okay. Again, follow all safety precautions when using your uh, your power tools. Right. I would. I think that is going to work swimmingly. So what I'm going to do before I tap that in place, I'm going to glue it. That is a nice tight fit. That is exactly what I was looking for. Alright, now it's time to glue this box together. But not glue it to the base. Because I've still got to cut the front of this box off for the door. So we're going to set this aside because this is one unit. Alright, so the first thing I want to do, I'll put some glue where the biscuits are going to go. Make sure the biscuits aren't going to come out. Then we're going to put a little glue around the outside. Because we want a tight bond. We want this to be waterproof when we're done. And don't worry if you get a little squeeze out. We'll take that off with a wet cloth and or belt sander when we're done and it's dried. Be beautiful. Now we're just going to repeat this step a few more times. Alright, so what we need to do now is we need to find out where we're going to cut this door. Alright, we're just going to throw a temporary in there.
Now we have a front door. Now it's time to marry this cabinet to this base. So let's do that. And in case you're wondering, I'm using a number 20 biscuit. Got to get on the bench to clamp this thing. All right, well, there's our cabinet so far. Now we're going to knock these scabs out of there. Excellent. Or as the bees say, be beautiful. All right, it's inside of our cabinet. Let's see what it's going to look like with our door on it. That will be the door. I have an idea. So there's this old fella that came out here. And I cut down a bunch of pine trees out here. And this, this guy, he must have been 80 years old. Really good guy. He had a sawmill. And he offered to drag away 116 foot logs. I mean, I cut down a lot of these pine trees. And, uh... He offered to drag them away for free if he could have them because he had a sawmill. And he gave me, he brought some slabs of wood over. And this is a piece of, the kind of tree is called catalpa. And I remember when I was a kid, my grandmother had a you know, catalpa tree. And it was very, very big and shady. It had long green, looks like green beans that come off of it in the, in the summertime. Really just a neat tree. I always remembered the name catalpa. However... He gave me these slabs, and they're very light, very dry, and I like the live edge, so I'm thinking about using this oddly shaped board as one of my shelves inside the hive, just because it looks neat. So I may do that. He also gave me a really big piece. Cut that up and use that for shelves as well. Good idea. Give it a shot. That is perfect. That will make a beautiful shelf. Nice live edge shelf. Beautiful. Be beautiful. Lovely. Right, a little glue. Right, let's see what we can do here. Sorry. 
So now that I've got better light, let's take a look at what we've got going on here. I've got two natural edge shelves that we've built for out of catalpa wood that are going to sit in here and hold some of our stuff. We've got a bin or a hopper that will hold our pine needles, straw, and whatnot. So when it's done, this is what it's going to look like. But now I've got to put a hinge on this door. I'm also going to put a hinge on the back so that you have to lift this before you can open the door. And I'm also going to put two strips down the side so that when I close the door it pinches tightly in between and kind of gives it a compression fit. I want it to be tight and I don't want to have any visible latch on the outside. Let's get going. You will see hinges on this box. It won't be too awfully bad. At first blush, it's still going to look like a beehive. And that's what we're going for. So I have to decide where the fulcrum is going to be. Where's the where's the tipping point going to be? I need to find out the. It's going to be right there. That won't work because when I do that, it's going to try to lift the hinge. Problem is when I lift that. Whole hive is lifting. All right, how are we going to do this? That's the ticket. Okay, found the solution. This is temporary. Let's make sure that that doesn't look too obvious that it's on an angle. And it doesn't, you can barely tell. What that is going to do, after I drill this hole and put this hinge together, I will take that piece of wood out and that will allow this lid to open and shut without shifting. That is the ticket. All right, bravery test. Let's see what happens. Instant hinge. Alrighty, so far so good. Beautiful. Let's see if this contraption works. Alright, now let's see if this works. 
and it's precisely what we want. A wise man once said, Exactamundo. And unless you're my age, or maybe a little younger, you don't know what that means. Well, you may know what it means, but you don't know who said it. Some of you know who said it. That is beautiful. All right. That is it with this build. All I have left to do, I'll put some spacers up in here to get rid of the slop going back and forth. But all I've got left to do is sand, stain, and finish this thing, and then it's going to live in the bee yard. And I'm going to be using it. It's going to be like magic. For you, it's going to be like that fast before you see it. For me, I've got another week or two worth of work here. See you in a minute.